and just had a look at the uh, tiny Revel. Let's take a look at the slightly larger iHeart kit. I love kit, it says it right there. Uh, so this is a 124 scale model of the uh, SPAD S13. Total length 240 millimeters, wingspan 330 millimeters. The total plastic parts are 100 plus pieces. Uh, down here, warning, trucking, hazard small parts, not for small children under three years. Uh, that's me. Detail scale kit for adult collectors to assemble. It says here. What else do you have on the box? Uh, Captain René Fonk Escadrille Spa. 103 bracket GC15, close bracket 4, 1918. So basically you got one colour scheme there. So I, is that the same colour scheme as that? I've no idea. And the stuff here where it says it's not a toy. This is probably not a toy. It's made in China. I heart kit. Barcode there. Copyright 2019. So this kit is at least four years old. On this side. I heart kit scale. Kit number over here. Kit number 62401. Uh, spad blah, blah, blah. picture that you see on the front on this side we have a different uh, color finish now this one says uh, Captain Eddie Rickenbacker US 94th Aero Squadron so that the Americans got involved uh, and it says four to edge parts as well so if you like your four to edge you got some for this one uh, over here spad S13. Uh, the SPAD was the first of a series of highly successful biplane fighter aircraft produced by Societe pour la Vision, uh, S. de Rivise, SPAD for short. So I didn't know that. Let me get into focus. So, so there, you can read the rest of it in your, on, in your leisure. Um, yeah, although less maneuverable than the lightweight Newport 17, it proved to be a very stable gun platform, which is what uh, fighter pilots want. Or is it? I don't know. I'm not a fighter pilot, you tell me. But if I was, yes, I'd want that. Uh, and then right at the end here, okay, again, oops, things falling down. Right at the end here, you have the uh, deco treat. And on the other side, same as the other side anyway so that's the exterior of the box let's take a look at what's inside so lots of paperwork at the top here is the uh, receipt I'll hide that from you so I bought this on eBay so I bought this on eBay cost me 49 pounds which I thought was a good price for a 124 scale kit uh, who did I buy it from? Does it tell me on here? Ludlow Trader. So uh, if I if I can find it, if I can remember it, I'll put a link below for Ludlow Trader on their eBay store. I'm sure they've got a website as well. They may do. I don't know. I'll find out. And uh, total order cost, including postage, was fifty-three pounds seventy-nine p. Four pounds ninety postage, which is about right, in my opinion. So a pile of paperwork in here. I love kit scale models, so they've got a whole pile of uh, 118 scale, 124 scale, 16 scale gun platform, about 16th scale as well, uh, 135th scale military armour, some bolts on the other side, so lots of stuff if you like the stuff. I should point out that I heart kit, I love kit, is essentially um, um, basically the other who are they um they're basically the same company as a uh, hobby boss or trumpeter uh, from what i understand they pretty much all come out of the same factory even the structure manuals are the same as you can see uh from this one so so there's another sheet of paper here with some master tools and stuff so tools that you may want to need for uh, model making. What's this? 
uh, grinding connector, electric sander polisher. Hmm. Over here you have something else, electric cutter. So basically it's a tiny cutting device. And uh, at the bottom here you've got two uh, electric drills. What have we got on the other side? Large scale, large display cases. Uh, for ships it would appear. Uh, anyway, so there's some paperwork there. And instruction manual. So gonna do what I usually do first and just take a look at the manual. So as you can see this manual fits nicely onto the page. There's a big sticker there. Black piece of tape. What's it covering up? You can basically make something out on the other side. So they've covered up some detail there. I'll see if we can find out what it is for later on. Or should I do it now? No, I'll, oh. I don't think this tape is going to come off very easily. But it's coming. Maybe this is something that they don't want us to see. Merit International LLC. No idea what that is. Anyway. On the front here, very little, if, well, no information about the aircraft itself. Uh, I know there's some people who find this disagreeable. Uh, on the front here it says, read before assembly, study, etc. Uh, and that's it. Image of the aircraft, scale, model number. First page, get you all in. First page is uh, sprue maps and stuff. Let me turn the, uh, brightness up on this so first page as you can see there is a sprue map so you've got a sprue a b c d uh, e f which is a f is the clear pass you got for photo edge parts and a tackle so we start with the seat which is a nice wicker seat wood brown it says there uh, i'm not going to uh, go into great detail but you can see what's going on Got the seat, got parts of the cockpit. Uh, then you drop the cockpit onto, you drop the seat rather onto the cockpit bits. Got some pipe work here to assemble. So it doesn't tell you what these things are. So I'd like to know what that is, for example. What is E25? I don't know. It doesn't tell me. And if I knew more about this airplane, I might know what it is, but I don't. So. We'll go to the next page, page four, and uh, basically completing the cockpit. And then you go straight to the tail fins, horizontal stabilizer. Also, it does tell you what it is, sometimes. So you put together horizontal stabilizer, so four parts, well, six parts. And then you have, and then you have the uh, fuselage. So you put the whole cockpit into the fuselage, nothing else inside the fuselage. Uh, no engine, surprisingly enough. Or is it? I don't know yet. Did I miss it? I didn't have a good look at the uh, sprue maps. No, nope, there's no engine. At this scale, I thought that would be mandatory, but uh, I guess not. Uh, so we're on page six. So you put in the uh, assembled horizontal stabilizer onto the back of the plane, and you put in the uh, machine gun onto this part here, which goes onto the top of the aircraft. A few. Uh, Exhaust pipes as well. Uh, opposite A2. And then over here, you put in the, uh, well, assemble the undercarriage here, but still on page six. On page seven, drop the undercarriage onto the bottom of the aircraft, put other, some other small bits at the back of the plane. So a few more little bits, including a photo edge, it would seem. Uh, lateral, what do you call these things? Stabilizers or, or something. So anyway, they go under the uh, cockpit. I'm not seeing there's these little, uh, little marks here. So this kit has been around. <laughs> uh, I believe these are some kind of ma marks caused by uh, age or something like that. 
Anyway, let's carry on. Go to page eight. We're halfway through the book. Uh, page eight. We uh, put some more bits on the top. So looks like these are uh, mounts for the wing. They start on the uh, tail fin. Rear stab vertical stabilizer. I just call it a fin. And uh, what appears to be some gun sights which go on top of there. Page nine. More little bits on the top and the uh, tail fin over here assembled. Page 10 starts working on the wings. So interesting. So it appears that most of the rigging is made out of uh, photo etch, so little bits of metal. Uh, hmm. So the wings appear to be one piece, not made out of two halves. So you drop the uh, struts onto the wing, put in the uh, photo etch bits, as shown. Same again on the other wing, on the left wing. We've just been talking about the right wing earlier on. So that's a more wing part. And uh, get to the end, or near the end, we get this uh, colour sheet. Put that to the side for the time being. So on page 12, step 17, we're putting the wings, the lower wings onto the aircraft. Uh, a large piece of photo etching which goes over these vents. So I uh, quite like that. I think that's going to be pretty good. And then over here on page 13, steps 18 and 19, uh, you're putting the uh, flaps on the way on the top wing and then you're dropping that or rather placing that on top of the airplane the image shows you uh, putting the airplane underneath <laughs> shows you putting the wing down upside down then placing the plane on top of it I assume this is to let gravity fit it together I suppose what you could do is you uh, when you're installing these parts uh, these uh, wing struts onto the uh, lower wing you could use the top wing as a kind of jig to keep them aligned properly um, at least that's what I'll do when I get around to building this and I will get around to building it sooner or later it may be later anyway. get to page 14 you put in some more photo etching again um, same on both well opposite sides and so on so it tells you all the uh, bits numbered, uh, P th PE30 for this piece, for example, on the opposite side, you got PE29. Uh, and we carry on to page 15, last but not least, we're putting the uh, propeller on the front of the aircraft. Lots of room in there, so, you know, lots of opportunity to uh, motorize this vehicle, put a little motor in the back there just to spin up the propeller. And uh, I've got plenty of little motors lying around, so I uh, I may investigate the uh, opportunity to do that. Whether will or not, I don't know. More photo edge parts, more rigging bits to be fitted. Uh, the last two, uh, or the last four, two on each wing. And there you go, on the back here, page 16, last step, step 22, more photo edge. So it looks like the photo edge is just gonna, <laughs> it's just gonna mainly be little straight bits of metal. Anyway, there, there you have it. Very straightforward. Not a lot of information about what the pieces are you pulling together. Um, but there you go. And then you have two sides. So you go A, which is uh, the marking guide for Eddie, for Captain Eddie Rickenbacker, US 94th Aero Squadron. You can see that there. The paint guide here, which uh, shows the paints made by Mr. Hobby, Vallejo, Model Master, Tamiya and Humbrol. So Vallejo and Tamiya are going to be the ones I'm most likely to use. So Mr. Hobby, uh, I don't know Model Master. I know Humbrol, but I don't use Humbrol. Not cute, I'm sure they're perfectly fine. I'm sure they're perfectly fine paints. In fact, I do have some enamels over there, but and uh, I know they're doing uh, um, acrylics now as well, so hmm. 
but uh, yeah, I'll stick to the ones I like best, which are Tamiya, Mr. Hobby, and uh, Vallejo, mainly for uh, brush painting. On the other side of this thing, you've got uh, the other marking guide, which is Captain René Fonk, Escadrille Spa. Uh, 103 bracket GC.15, close bracket 4, 1918. Uh, slightly different colour. The underside is beige, while the underside of the American's plane is white. And uh, down here you've got the colours that you require for this one as well. Uh, let's get a close look at those colours. So, pause it if you want to make a record of these colours for the uh, uh, Captain Rene's plane. On the other side we've got uh, Captain Eddie Rickenbacker's plane. Eddie Rickenbacker, guitarist maybe? No. Anyway, so that's that. It's time to look at some plastic. So a big box here, with big pieces of plastic. And what I'm going to do here, so let's, let's go from the top and work our way down. And let's see, can I... So heat sealed, not very well, which is just as, just as well. First bits. See if we can get them in the shot. Let's see if we can brighten you down a bit. So as I would expect from uh, this brand, well, the uh, company that makes these things, uh, the uh, so you've got these little things here. Uh, vents rather uh, which uh, look pretty nice um, what can I say they'll hold the uh, weather the <laughs> the panel liner really really well something you hear a lot about when they're talking about these things um, a few large there exhaust pipes there a couple, a couple of other little pieces there which I don't know what they are or oh, that's the ends of the exhaust pipes I can see that these bits are slide molded there and the other side isn't so that's the bit that fits into the end of the uh, exhaust pipe so it looks like the other side I'm gonna have to have a go at uh, hauling it out I don't know if you can see that no yeah so maybe Trying to make a bit of a hole on this side will uh, maybe ad maybe advantageous. Let's make a change there. Both from me. There you go. Uh, on the inside of the vehicle, there's uh, virtually no detail. Just some mounting points for the uh, for the cockpit and the uh, mounting points for the uh, exhaust pipes sticking out on either side. So nothing on the inside to bother yourself with. Uh, lots of. Uh, uh, extrusion pin marks, there's a few there which probably will be visible, that's where the cockpit is. So uh, we'll take a look at to see if those need filling when uh, we come around to building it. Anyway, that's uh, the first sprue. Do we have a number for this? It's over here. That, that is sprue A. Next sprue in the bag. Uh, sprue B. Oh, what is it? Oh, this is a uh, sprue E. So sprue E has uh, mostly cockpit bits. Uh, the seat you can see there, and some pipe work and stuff. Uh, they are uh, extrusion pin marks, but they are on the uh, opposing sides, so you won't see them when the vehicle is put together. I hope. Uh, there's only one here that. Uh, offend slightly it says uh, raised a bit this one here is raised slightly so but apart from that everything else is on the inside so i think we'll be okay uh, again very nice crisply made parts nothing to concern oneself with here very little cleanup is going to be required on uh, on this kit so far 
There you go, so have a good look at that. What I'm going to do, I'm going to change the background a bit because the uh, grid work is getting in the way of, uh, of everything. Just a moment, please. Okay then, so I don't know if you can see any better. I'm trying to remove the background noise, as it were. Anyway, there you go. Next thing off the top is this, something wrapped in uh, foam plastic. Which I'm assuming is the uh, windscreen wiper, or the windscreen, not the wiper. <laughs> Don't need wipers. So very carefully wrapped in uh, foam. Just a bit of tape there. And we're going to cut this off. There you go. So sprue F2, some beautifully molded clear plastic. Mm -hmm. Okay. Then. So I've decided I don't like this uh, light green. So I'm going to change that again to something else. Uh, that's what happens when you are as indecisive as I am. So let's go get a different colour piece of paper. Oh, that's better. I like that better. Hope you do too. Anyway, next sprue. Up the top of the box, we've got a much larger sprue. Let's see if you can get it all into the camera. Nice large bits of plastic here, propeller, various tail, virtually all the tail parts, landing gear, top of the engine, cockpit hole. Yeah, again, very nicely molded, very nice to look at. One hopes that they will go together as well as they look. This is a, uh, you can only hope. Let's take some close looks at some uh, bits of plastic. So that's the uh, engine cover and the uh, cockpit entry radiator front of the uh, engine propeller there only the one propeller wheels two sets rear uh, tail fin parts another sprue as you can see this one's uh, all wings uh, this one has some uh, writing on it. After the old day, I just didn't notice it on the others. Uh, yeah, so this is one wing. This appears to be the top wing. Uh, so you put together the wing in two halves. Now, did they mention that in the instruction manual? I don't recall. Actually, I'm going to take a look. Did I just miss it when I was going through it? So it shows top wing, but it doesn't show you putting it together from two halves. It just shows you top wing. <laughs> so there you go. So there's a stage missing, unless we put it together previously, which would be unlikely, I think. Uh, no, just shows top wing. So unless they decided to redesign it after the fact, after they made this, I don't know. But there's certainly a, a section missing here which shows you in, uh, putting together the two parts of the top wing. Anyway. Some, some might say that uh, this is one of the problems with uh, this particular brand. But, uh, and I have seen people complain about this sort of thing before, but uh, I'm going to carry on. And uh, do you want to take it out? Yeah. This one's stuck together properly. Uh, 
And the first bit of flush I think I've seen through this whole kit is on, on these strut parts here. Um, uh, fairly easy to clean up. You can see the one beside it is near perfect. Probably just a little bit of clean up with the uh, mold lines. But uh, yeah, I think we'll be okay. Again, very beautifully molded. No worries here. Uh, you got to line up marks, little holes and pins and holes to make sure you get this lined up properly. You got this fun little groove, these holes here, which are. Uh, I don't know what these things are because you've got plenty of push pin marks. So I think what you one's going to need to do is to just uh, turn the sand around these uh, or over all these little marks here because. Uh, particularly that one it looks like some work has been done on that one to clean it to clean up around it so just a bit of extra sanding or scraping around these to make sure they don't interfere uh, this one particular this is uh, raised over here so uh, yeah aside from that no issues so a little bit of work to clean it up but aside from that it looks like it will go together okay Let's keep our fingers crossed that it does, yeah? Uh, one more screw. One more large piece of plastic. Uh, this is the lower wing. Can I get this open without cutting it? So, I'm going to use the scissors. This is uh, the more civilized way to cut things like this. So on the inside again lots of uh, push marks, extrusion pin marks should I say, uh, some of which may need sanding down. Uh, this one over here particularly looks a bit, yeah, pretty bad. But overall, the important side, the top sides, look uh, pretty nice. Uh, wing struts there, there's a, yeah there is a, uh, <laughs> There's what appears to be, just a moment. There's what appears to be a uh, screen, windscreen there in the, the gray plastic. We've already seen that in the clear plastic, so why that is there, I don't know. Uh -huh. So all together, fairly dense piece of plastic, not too bad. Where to put the bag? Yeah, so that is a sprue. I've been neglecting the sprue numbers. Sprue B, this one is. A couple more things in the box. We have the uh, photo etch. It appears to be made probably of steel. And uh, I don't think I need to take them out of the bag. You can see them quite clearly on there. Uh, so most of the uh, wing spars or wing struts not spars what do you call those things uh the bracing wing bracing complete with little holes in the corners or whatever so some of them need bending on the ends like these as you may have seen in the instructions you've got this uh now it didn't did it say it was a well it probably did so it's uh you've got the uh, little uh uh sighting scope there and these little vents here for the uh, radiators. And yeah, that's it. Very nice. Ah, I shall leave them in there because you can see them quite clearly anyway. So. So uh, lots of super glue work to do there. These particularly look very nice to me. In fact, I will. I will open it up. So it is covered in plastic on both sides. So, but I, I do like the way that these that these little uh, grills look. They look beautiful.
Anyway, so that's the uh, quarter edge sprue. So that's the metal parts of this kit. I like the look of that. And the last thing in the box, got this massive sheet here of uh, decals. This is getting blunt. Oh, I know what's the problem is, there's a bit of tape stuck to it. <laughs> there you go. So I like that the uh, even the decals are in their own plastic bag. Maybe a tape there to keep them stuck together. Yeah, so they've been st <laughs> just like the greening is so long that they're practically stuck together. Mm. So those your sprues. <laughs> so there's the decals. Now we've looked at the sprues already. Uh, yeah, looking very nice. They they do look like they've had a bit of you know, some contacting, the way that the uh, cover sheet has uh, stuck to them slightly. So, but I think that will be that will uh, sort itself out when the uh, decals are used. Yeah, a bit of um, varnish on top of that should uh, clean it up nicely. Fingers crossed. Anyway, so there you have it. That is a uh, SPAD 13 S and uh, to go alongside the uh, tiny SPAD from Revel. Uh, will I even build a little one? I don't know. It's, it looks like it's going to be a lot of work just to make it look presentable, let alone beautiful. Well, this one is just a case of uh, cleaning off the uh, extrusion pin marks on the back of the parts, particularly the wings and some very minor flashing on one of the uh, wing struts and I think we'll be fine yeah and that, this one looks like this, the, the iHeart kit one looks like it's going to be a first row for the uh, easy build because there's uh, well they've got no engine to put in there which is a bit of a disappointment but uh, I guess they didn't have the uh, specifications for the engines or what engine they're using there so uh, but uh, gives you the opportunity to chuck a little extra motion there to uh, spin the propeller. So this is the uh, SPAD 13 by Our Heart Kit. Uh, yeah, if you've uh, had a go at this kit or you have one ready to go or you built one, is what I should have said to begin with, uh, leave a comment down below. Uh, share your uh, highs and lows of this little uh, kit. And uh, if you enjoyed this video, tell your friends and uh, here, give me a thumbs up if you didn't like this video tell me why so I took uh, so that I can do a better job next time and uh, thank you very much for watching take care everybody and uh, happy modeling